Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to represent Kensington Market, one of the most vibrant and diverse neighbourhoods in our city. Kensington's unique shops and restaurants attract tourists and artists from around the world. But COVID-19 has forced many business owners to give up and shut down. People like Julian. Julian is the owner of Model Citizen, a store that sells unique made-in-Toronto clothing and goods. Julian did exactly what public health requested and closed his store during the first wave of COVID-19. His landlord agreed to apply to the federal rent subsidy program, but after months of waiting, his landlord backed out, which meant Julian had just days to come up with $20,000 in rent. He can't do it. Julian has been a small business owner in Kensington for 13 years, and now he's closing his doors permanently. Just like Amazing Salad, Bed and Better Living, Urulins, Crespers Cafe and Bar, Moo Fritz, Pink Canary, Soul Survivor, Search and Rescued, and San Cosme. These are just a few of the businesses in Kensington who are closing down. And what is happening in Kensington is happening all across my riding and all across our city, from Bloor Street to Ossington to Dundas to College. We are losing Main Street, we are losing jobs, and we are losing the vibrancy that makes our neighbourhoods unique and special. I am urging you, I am urging this government to step up and help businesses get through this pandemic. Expand who is eligible for the eviction ban. Provide direct rent relief for businesses in need. The future of our economic recovery depends on this moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Speaker. You know, I want to compliment the great job our law enforcement does in our communities to serve and protect. One key aspect includes keeping illegal drugs and illegally grown drugs, grown drugs uh, such as cannabis, from hitting our streets and getting into the hands of our youth, plus those who attempt to distribute said illegal drugs. As many of you may already know, Chatham-Kent-Leamington is home to Ontario's largest greenhouse population. Now, these greenhouses are known to supply various delicious fruits and vegetables to Ontarians all over the province. Sadly. It seems that not everyone has good intentions to grow legal vegetation. On September 16th, the Chatham Kent Police Service Intelligent Unit seized over $7.3 million worth of illegally grown cannabis, making this the largest drug bust Chatham Kent has ever seen. And then on September 23rd, police were also able to get a warrant and seize approximately $3,000 worth of suspected methamphetamines, packaging materials, and digital scales. Furthermore, police seized again an additional $36,000 worth of cocaine and other illegal drugs just last week. Speaker, this is a great success for the Chatham Kent Police Services, as we are able to keep these illegally obtained substances off the streets and out of the hands of vulnerable people. Police and city council members are encouraging people to call Crime Stoppers or their local police if they ever suspect illegal activity. Together, we are able to put our foot down and claim a victory against illegal drugs and continue to make our communities safer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear government, I think it's time for real talk, real talk about the care for older adults in Ontario. Last week, you asked everyone to pitch in and help their loved ones, and the people of Kitchener Centre are doing just that. But based on the calls I'm getting in my office, they need your help. So I've been thinking, what is one way that you can commit to do what families actually need so that they feel loved and cared for and heard? The answer? You can support Bill 196, my call for an independent seniors advocate in Ontario. When you support my bill, you're developing an authentic circle of care around older adults across this province. You're providing them, their families, and the ones who care for them with a space to raise concerns when things aren't going right and report on victories when the changes they need are finally completed. And when you support my bill, you're being proactive in the care that you deliver to older adults because you're listening to the experts who have been telling us that we can and must do better for older adults in Ontario. And when you support my bill, you'll be giving the older adults in your lives and in ours the greatest amount of gratitude. You will tell them that you care with your actions, not only with your words. 
I'm looking forward to your support on October 19th when we come together to debate my private member's bill. And I know that the people of Kitchener Centre will be watching, along with all Ontarians, as we take a historic leap of faith together. Now that is real talk. Signed, Ontario. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Speaker, it's an honour to rise today to recognize this being Ontario Agriculture Week. My predecessor, the former MPP Bert Johnson, took this initiative 22 years ago to establish Ontario Agriculture Week to set aside time to thank those who work hard every single day to grow some of the best food in the world that we get to enjoy every day here in Ontario. Each morning, farmers on nearly 50,000 farms across our province wake up to plant, grow, and harvest more than 200 varieties of food that are produced in Ontario annually. Ontario's hardworking farmers continue to provide, to provide families with fresh fruits, vegetables, high-quality meats, poultry, and fish, as well as nutritious eggs and dairy, and delicious honey, maple syrup, and world-class wines. Now more than ever, we must support uh, local farmers and the communities that put food on our kitchen tables. When consumers choose local food, they are helping to build a strong farm and food sector, which supports good jobs throughout our province. During this year's Agriculture Week, as much as any other time of the year, we are grateful for what they do for this province, and as a government, we are proud to support them in our agri-food sector. On behalf of the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and our entire caucus, I want to thank each and every farmer in this province for being the agri-food heroes we so depend on. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In my riding, there are many business districts located in historic areas like Dundas, Ancaster, and Westdale. These are delightful main streets full of local retailers, services, and restaurants. We all know small businesses across Ontario were hard hit by COVID-19 in the spring shutdown. They're now open again and working hard to create safe and unique shopping experiences. A great example of the entrepreneurship of Ontarians is the Made in Dundas box. Our local Dundas Museum partnered with local businesses to launch the Made in Dundas box. Each box features a surprise collection of locally sourced hand-picked items from the wonderful businesses in the community. Village Bakery, Nellie James Gourmet Foods, Mickey McGuire's Cheese, and Weir's Lavender, just to name a few. This is a wonderful way to support our local small businesses and to raise funds for an important cultural organization. The proceeds from each box will give five young students a chance to visit the museum and a chance to participate in their award-winning educational program. Mr. Speaker, this program was so successful that it sold out. But for those of you who missed out, don't worry. The next Made in Dundas box will be launching soon. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Great idea. Member Statements. The member for Guelph. It's Ontario Agriculture Week, and I want to encourage people to support our local farmers by buying local at our limited gatherings this weekend. I also want to take a moment to talk about the amazing work by local food groups in Guelph. Groups like The Seed, who are working hard to connect local farmers with the most vulnerable. During COVID, they've delivered over 100,000 nutritious food boxes via contactless delivery. Like 10C, the Smart Cities Initiative, University of Guelph, and Harvest Impact, who have a plan to grow back better, to make Guelph the first city where no one goes without healthy food. It's a bold initiative we are taking the problems of food waste and food access to create solutions, to create jobs, to build a more regenerative food system that doesn't exhaust our planet. Speaker, excuse the pun, but there is hunger for these local solutions. So I'm urging the government to protect farmland, to use your procurement power to support local sustainable farmers by buying local food for public institutions, and to invest in programs that keep people fed. We need to learn the lessons from the pandemic to make us more resilient. And I want to thank the food organizations in Guelph who are showing us the way forward. And I want to thank all those Ontario farmers who are growing such delicious, healthy food for all of us. Thank you, Speaker. 
Thank you. Next, we have the member for Scarborough Agent Court. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Our government's investment into Scarborough Health Network emphasizes our commitment to improving and optimizing health care for all. Mr. Speaker, it is always a pleasure to visit our health care institutions and relay good news, especially during these trying times. On one such visit last Friday, I joined my Scarborough colleagues at the Scarborough Health Network to announce the allocation of $4,696 for 2021 year to CHN through the Health Infrastructure Renewal Fund. This funding will support the roof, carpet, and window, window replacements, as well as assist in the replacement of nurse call system and Birchmont Hospital chiller and cooling tower. The funding will help Scarborough hospitals, including Birchmont Hospital, to continue the amazing work they are doing to keep our community healthy and safe. The above announcement is in addition to the $500,000 funding provided to Birchmont to help them plan the renovation of the existing 11,000 square feet of the emergency department in addition to new 14,000 square feet. I would like to take the opportunity to commend CHN doctors, nurses, and frontline healthcare workers for their commitment and sacrifice to safeguard the health of our community. They are the real heroes of COVID pandemic. They went beyond the call of duty and reached out to the long-term care centers, retirement homes, and assisted living facilities to care for the most vulnerable and prevent the spread of the pandemic. Thank you. I'm watching the clock and occasionally allowing both sides to go a few seconds over. Member statements, the member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. I recently met with members of my community who belong to various recovery and addiction 12-step programs. During the first wave of COVID-19, when the province was abruptly shut down, their ability to hold in-person group support meetings was halted. The isolation and the inability to have in-person fellowship and support had a devastating effect on their members. I was told that in my city of Sudbury, the number of overdoses also climbed. During this meeting, one participant told me that even though they're now able to meet safely in person, 30 per cent of the support group simply has never returned. It's troubling because 12-step recovery and addiction programs can increase success rates by as much as 18 to 25 per cent, Speaker. With the number of COVID-19 cases on the rise and an expectation of a second wave soon to come, Advocates of 12-step programs are concerned that their ability to meet in person will be cancelled again. Last spring, decisions had to be made quickly, but fortunately, hindsight is 2020, and that's why, before any future decisions are made, these advocates are joining with others to make the government aware of the impact that the first shutdown had on them. They have one simple request, Speaker, that the government include 12-step recovery and addiction programs as part of the list of essential services for future shutdowns. This would ensure that, with proper controls in place, their ability to have in-person fellowship and support could continue, especially when it might be needed most. I support their opinion, and I'll reach out to the Premier, as well as the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, to ask for their support as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I rise in the House as a very proud MPP for my riding of Richmond Hill. On July 26, a fire ripped through a townhouse complex and destroyed nearly 20 units, displacing several families. Among those is a woman by the name of Simone Bennett with her two sons, eight and nine years old. They lost everything, Mr. Speaker. They only had clothing on their backs. Tragically, the fire destroyed their home and the family car while she moved into a shelter with her children. Her friend, Natalie Bihari, set up a GoFundMe page for Mrs. Bennett to help her to raise funds to cover her first and last month's rent, obtain furnishings, clothing, and basic needs. Mr. Speaker, I'm so proud and happy to report that 
almost 16,000 of 18,000 gold has been re raised by this community. I'd like to thank Mrs. Bihari for taking this initiative and wish Mrs. Bennett all the very best as she begins a new chapter. I'd also like to thank the Richmond Hill Fire and Emergency Services, the York Region Community and Social Services, as well as the Red Cross for the assistance to these families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Brantford, Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to acknowledge a wonderful community event which took place in Brantford this past Saturday, October 3rd. The first annual home run for hospice game at the Arnold Anderson Stadium featured an alumni roster of Brantford Red Sox players, our local inter-county baseball league team. While spectators were limited, the game was broadcast on se several local stations. For well over 100 consecutive years, baseball games have been played at this stadium, which is an impressive track record until COVID threatened this, this tradition. In order to continue the century-long institution, Saturday's celebratory scrimmage game was organized. It was also organized to honor several incredible volunteers who have contributed so extensively to baseball in Brantford. The game was played in memory of Jamie Cork and Tom Welchley, who both passed away in the last year. Sue Harris was also recognized, and she was able to be there for Saturday's game. They have all served Brantford minor baseball, the Brantford Red Sox, and the community of Brantford through their dedication and love for the game. And especially meaningful to me was that this game was a home run for hospice, was played, played to raise funds for our local Stedman Community Hospice. While the pandemic has changed so much in our lives, it has not diminished our community spirit and its love for the game of baseball. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning, and I'm going to recognize the Minister of Health on a point of order. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm seeking unanimous consent for members to wear pink masks in recognition of Metastatic Breast Cancer Awareness Day, which is next Tuesday, as well as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I would also like to thank Rethink Breast Cancer for channeling their inner Ontario spirit in making these masks that will help raise awareness for women who have metastatic breast cancer. Health is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow the members to wear the pink masks today in recognition of Metastatic Breast Cancer Day and Breast Cancer Month. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. The member for Hamilton Mountain has a point. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pride to congratulate the class of 2011. October 6th is the ninth anniversary of us being elected to the 40th Parliament. Congratulations to all of you.